<laughs> Hello and welcome to truthiswhatmatters.com. This is my co-host Mr. Ray Luff and Mr. Harold McCarthy and we're going to touch on a few points that we missed on last show. So with us to introduce Harold is Ray and we're going to talk a little bit about a recap of last week's show. Okay, I'd like to introduce again Dr. Harold McCarthy and uh, he has his Doctorate of Theology. Uh, last time we said that he had his Bachelor of Theology, but he also has his Doctorate of Theology, which we're reminded of for today. So last time we got two-thirds of the way through the explanations that Harold was giving why he is not an evolutionist. So I'd like to turn the program over to Harold that, to get us to review what those three ways were and to expand on the third way that we didn't get discussed last day. Hey, thank you, Ray and Brad. Uh, you remember last time I was mentioning that uh, when I was teaching high school, uh, that uh, it, when we're, I was the head of the English department at Bradford District High School for 21 years and when uh, we'd be discussing literature that uh, brought up the subject of creation and evolution, I would tell the classes, you know, I don't believe in evolution at all. And the students would react with a gasp of astonishment and say, but Mr. McCarthy, you, you, you're, you're a university graduate, you're a high school teacher, and don't you know that evolution is a fact? And I'd say, oh, isn't that interesting? Uh, I wonder if we could consider three basic points with regard to this matter. And the first point I would bring up was that the fossil column is false. And you remember, we were pointing out that the fossil column really doesn't exist anywhere in the world except in textbooks. Uh, in fact, we we're noticing that if you look around the world at the, the, the strata, the rock strata, everywhere in the world the fossil, fossil column is upside down or backwards. For instance, some of the most primitive forms of life, as we conceive of them, that should be at the bottom, are in mountaintops. And of course, this accords entirely with the Bible because in the flood of Noah, the says that the waters cover the mountaintops by 15 cubits. That's about 22 feet or so. So naturally, there would be uh, primitive life, uh, ocean life at the uh, tops of mountains. And furthermore, uh, not only is the fossil column uh, mixed up and upside down all over the place in all the mountain ranges of the world. But the, the, the really big point is that, that there are no evidences, really watertight evidences, of transitional forms of any species ever evolving into another species. Uh, now, of course, there's what we call microevolution, evident everywhere that there are mutations or changes, adaptations within species, so that there are all kinds of, of variations of species. You've got dogs that are about the size of mice, and you've dogs that are almost the size of a horse, but they're still dogs. But you never have any, any evidence whatsoever of a dog turning into a cat or anything like that. I think last time we are uh, pointing out that if uh, snakes actually eventually turn into birds, as some uh, evolutionary works uh, propose, then actually you would have to have virtually millions of gradations of mutations so that one species evolved into another species. This is called transmutation, that is crossing the barrier from one species to another. Uh, so that you would have snakes uh, where their scales gradually were turning into feathers and the feathers into wings. So you would have uh, these transitional species uh, where you had uh, almost all snake and little bird until millions of mutations later you had uh, uh, fossils where the creature was almost all bird but just a little bit snake. And uh, I was pointing out last time uh, that I have a letter from probably the greatest or one of the greatest uh, fossil experts in the world. And I, I looked it up in my files and I found a copy of it. It's a signed letter by Dr. Colin Patterson, who, is, who was the senior paleontologist, the head boy, uh, the head honcho at the British Museum of Natural Science in London, England. And 
he uh, was asked for evidence for evolution by a chap whom I knew slightly from New York, state of New York. His name was Luther Suther Sunderland. And uh, Luther Sunderland was asked by the Board of Regents in the state of New York to look into this matter of uh, creation and evolution and to make a report. So he rode all over the world and he gathered evidence from all over the world from creationists and evolutionists and scientists, biologists and botanists and so on. And uh, one of the people that he wrote to uh, was this Dr. Colin Patterson, the senior paleontologist at the British Museum of Natural Science in London, England. And that's his title here. Uh, it's um, dated uh, uh, April 10th, 1979. And that's 120 years after uh, Darwin published his book, The Origin of Species. And just uh, as a side here, uh, in his book, The Origin of Species, in, published in 1859, uh, Darwin devotes almost a whole chapter uh, to pointing out that he knows that there really isn't the evidence that he wants for his theory at that time. But he states there that now that scientists know what they're looking for, paleontologists know what they're looking for, he is sure that they will find evidence in the fossil record of uh, these transitional forms showing, giving evidence for one species uh, evolving into another mm -hmm. species by a series of mutations. And um, so, anyway, here is a letter written 120 years after Darwin published his Origin of Species. And uh, Dr. Colin Patterson, the head of the, the uh, paleontology department at the British Museum of Natural History in London, England, writes this to, to Luther Sutherland. And he says, Dear Mr. Sutherland, thanks for your letter of 5th of March and your kind words about the museum and, and my book. I held off answering you for a couple of weeks in case the artwork mentioned in your letter should turn up, but it hasn't. I fully agree with your comment on the lack of direct illustration of evolutionary transitions in my book. If I knew of any, any fossil, uh, event, if I knew of any fossil or living, I would certainly have included them. You suggest that an artist should be asked to visualize such transformations, but where would he get the information from? Uh, I could not honestly provide it, and if I were to leave it to our cystic license, would not this mislead the reader? Then in the next paragraph he says, I wrote the text of my book four years ago, that would be in 1975. If I were to write it now, I think the book would be rather different. Gradualism is a concept I believe in. Now he's talking about Darwinian gradualism, basically. That is that through a series of gradual mutations, uh, one species evolved, transmuted into another species. Gradualism is a concept I believe in, not just because of Darwin's authority, but because my understanding of genetics seems to demand it. Yet Gould and the American Museum people are hard to contradict when they say that there are no transitional fossils. Just think of that for a minute. Uh, if there are no transitional fossils, then where is the evidence, the basic, the most basic evidence for the theory, or really the hypothesis of evolution, because Dr. Patterson is saying here there's no evidence for it. Well, Harold, how come, uh, as you taught school, all, yep. all, all, all the teachings of evolution and, and fossils, as you just mentioned, yep. they're all been, been taught as they should believe in that rather yes. than anything else. And according to what you, that letter, what you said, it's completely false teachings. Yes, it, it's, it's a theory. It, it, and it's I, a hypothesis, I, not even graduated to he, a theory yet. Yes, I believe, uh, the definition, the definition of a theory, as far as I know, is that it is a, a, an idea, a, 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 a scientific, usually it's a scientific positing or, or a development of an idea that is based on some sort of evidence. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, as far as I can see, as is backed up by 
uh, Dr. Patterson here, uh, there isn't any real solid evidence for the theory of evolution, so I don't think it's really a theory, I think it's just a, an hypothesis. Yeah. It's an idea, it's a supposition. And it's a marvelous supposition, mm -hmm. I mean, it's fantastic. I, yeah, I mean, so well, that's really what uh, Dr. Patterson's saying here, you know, if you got people to draw and to imagine, right. you know, all the steps in these trees of how one fossil developed into another and one species to another. I mean, it's beautiful theory, but it just the evidence isn't there. You're not allowed to teach creationism in, in classes now, are you? Are you, bell are you no. uh, bound by a certain agreement with the school board to, to actually teach creationism? In most of the uh, you know, states of the United States, it's illegal to teach creationism. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, this tends to go back to, you remember, 1925 and the monkey trial mm -hmm. scopes in Dayton, Tennessee, uh, where uh, William Jennings Bryant debated uh, da Darrell. Clarence Darrow, and uh, undoubtedly Darrow won the argument on the radio broadcasts of the trial all over the world. But uh, the jury, of course, gave the decision to uh, uh, William Jennings Bryan because they were Bible Belt people and mm -hmm. they would not support evolution. But uh, it basically the the stance, as I can understand, it, so as I understand, of the Ministry of Education is that. Uh, you you don't teach creationism. That's uh, that's bigotry. You're you're mm -hmm. forcing a religious bigotry on on your kids, and uh, they they're humanists to the core. And uh, the uh, I think uh, they try to say that it's we're teaching science, not religion. Go yeah. get religious training on the weekend at your church. Yeah. The the problem is is they refuse to recognize that a hypothesis is something that they want people to believe in with no evidence, it, yes. it takes faith to do that, and in effect they're teaching a religion. But they, yeah. won't, they won't admit that it's a religion to believe this hypothesis of Dharma. And this hypothesis allows you to be skeptical of the, of the other alternative, which is creation. Yes. And so it supports skepticism of the only other alternative. In fact, some of the, the, the people that claim to be scientists with this uh, hypothesis claim that the reason they believe the hypothesis is that if they didn't, they would have to believe the creation account. Yes, yes, yes. So, in total denial of wanting to believe the creation depart account, they only had one choice, which was to believe this. Yes. And, and that kind of points out the fact that, um, the from the Bible's perspective, the Bible says that all men are religious. Yeah. And that we have a choice between man's religion or God's religion. And so here we have a situation where man's religion is being pitted against God's religion. Yes. And man says God looks foolishness, foolish. However, God looks at man and makes man look foolish. And I believe, Ray, there's a basic point here that men do not want to accept uh, the f fact that there, the belief that there's a creator because then they are accountable. Mm -hmm. They are responsible. And they cannot avoid accountability and responsibility. And of course, that's a bit frightening. If we're accountable for everything we do, wouldn't it be nice just to think that we're all just the results of evolutionary accident, that time and chance, blind chance, uh, created, or, or caused, and we use the word created so much, but uh, it caused everything to come into being just by accident. You're just there by accident. Mm -hmm. I'm just here by accident. That the two trillion, three trillion cells in your body, each one of which contains more information than all of New York City, uh, just happened by accident. And this allows men to, to basically be the captain of their own destiny. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so like, there's a tendency of us to want to be our own boss. Yeah. And so um, it's, a, it's convenient to go along with the religion that supports your own view of, of mm -hmm. how you'd like to view yeah. the world. You'd like to be in charge of your own world. Yeah. So uh, no moral responsibility then. You're just an accident, so it doesn't matter what you do. 